I represent Kababunui Jumu Federal Constituency of Kogi State. I'm drawing my inspiration this afternoon from Order 5, Privileges. Honorable Speaker, my colleagues, I want to say that um, last week, Tuesday, this House, very, very honorable House, passed a resolution that we be readmitted properly to the House with all our remunerations paid. I want to thank this House for their magnanimity, for their love, for their care and concern. I want to pray the Almighty God will bless every one of you. Amen. Honorable Speaker, after that resolution, the House was illegally adjourned on Wednesday as against the provisions of Order 402, Sub 1 to 3 of the rules of this House. And this House is a House of rules. It's a very honorable House. This House was unceremoniously adjourned to, 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 I mean, for us to see today. Today, again, we came and the chambers were closed. It took the intervention, a very serious one indeed, of the Deputy Speaker for the chambers to be opened. Mr. Speaker, this is a very responsible house. And we are representing various constituencies of this country. And the rules of this house have provided conditions and conditionalities for adjournments of cities. But for members to come and meet the house short on whosoever orders after the adjournment, I want to add that this must be investigated. On the resolution of the house that will be paid, we were told that we will get our money by 12 o'clock Wednesday, two weeks ago. When that money was not paid, we took our time to meet every relevant body that is associated with the payment of this money. And Mr. Speaker, these are our discoveries. One, we discovered that while we were, we were on suspension, that it was the agreement of leadership to keep our money in accordance with civil service procedure and public service rule in a suspense account. But our discovery is that checks were raised in our names and kept in the vault. But somehow, those checks started disappearing as from November last year. And I know that our emolument, they are supposed to be statutory. As I speak to you, those monies have been spent. It is not available. And I say this on good authority. This now prompted me to say, now that I've been readmitted, at least my emolument for April should have been paid. So I took another investigative tour to the relevant bank concerned. And Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, I was told by this bank, the UBA, that is the official bank of this house, that this house is indebted to the tune. Excuse me, Mr. Speaker. And that is why I have not been paid, 
neither any one of us here paid. And we all know that this house is a house of appropriation. Before, any, before the NDAs, or uh, indeed the federal government can take loan from, a, from any international organizations or body or countries, that this house must approve of it. And if we approve of loans for the NDAs and indeed the federal government, if this house is going to take a loan on behalf of this house, then we ought to have passed a resolution that such loans be taken. To the best of my ability, I've gone through the vote and proceedings of this house since my suspension on, the June, on June 22nd. There was nowhere that resolution was reached that we should take a loan. And I've also gone on personal investigation and I discovered that most principal officers in the, on this floor did not also sit in any meeting with the Speaker of the House to approve that loans be taken on our behalf. Our, sorry, Chief Abdullah said you cannot shave a man's head behind him. If you are borrowing on our behalf, we ought to know that you are borrowing on our behalf, what you are spending the money on and all that. And I also discovered, Mr. Speaker, that the bank also moved because in the financial regulation of this country, in the CBA uh, Act, no bank can grant loan to an individual without the resolution of the Board of Trustees. And in this case, or overdraft, and in this case, the resolution of this House. Since there was no resolution of the House, or indeed the body of principal officers, to borrow these monies on our behalf, then this House, in the interest of my children's school fees, in the interest of my dead mother and father in the village, in the interest of my beautiful wife and children, write the bank and ask them to please settle the matter of their loan with the individual who borrowed it. Since there was no resolution, this house must take a resolution to please write the bank and ask the bank to release our money in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I also want to say that our allowances are talking of an emolument for 11 months have not been paid as severance. As I speak to you, with the condition of that account, our severance, our emolument, all, there's no money available. So I want to ask that please, as a house, let us write this bank because there's no money to run this house as I'm speaking to you. And in the light of all these shortcomings, it is obvious that there is leadership failure. Except you want to deceive yourself, except you don't want to speak the truth, there is leadership failure. Why? You adjourn the house against the provisions of the rules of the house, offense number one. Secondly, you lock up the chambers against members when there's no official notice of communication. I also want to say I draw the respect of the speaker, the majority of the speaker, to read what offense number two is tied to. He said, whenever the house shall stand adjourned to a date, not fixed, this is order four, rule two. And it is represent and it is represented to the sorry, represented to the speaker. Whenever the house stand adjourned, either to a fixed date or resolution or the rules of the house, he says the speaker may give notice accordingly, and the house shall meet on the date at the time stated in the notice. Whenever the speaker shall have given notice in accordance with either of the two proceed, uh, preceding sub-rules, the clerk, the clerk, the clerk shall communicate the terms of notice to each member. What happened is a breach of our rules. What happened today again is another fundamental breach of our rules. Why I move that the issue of 
our problems financially with the bank and the person concerned who collected this money on our behalf. This is the first time somebody is taking Panadol for another person's headache. That this house set up an investigative adult committee to look into the finances of this house, our level of our level of indebtedness as it were, and the way and manner to get our monies paid. Then for the shortcomings that is directly translated to Mr. Speaker in the person of the highly respected right honorable Dimitri Bakoli, I want to move that my privilege and that of my constituency have been abused by this leadership, uh, I, want, I don't want to say misbehavior, leadership shortcoming. And in the light of this, I move that the right of the medical college be suspended no. yes. until yes. be suspended until the report of this investigation is concluded. If not for if not for the banking activities for for us ceremoniously adjourning this house and for locking members out today, I move that they be suspended. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable colleagues.